whole month gone already of 2010 or well, nearly my video is all about recovery from addiction to either substance or behavior my addictive substance alcohol my behavior quite as addictive work relationships collecting materialism you name it try to fill a gap inside me and I didn't even know I had a gap and I didn't know much about fear either other than it was a constant state within me and it took me a while to understand what that was because what did I do when given the opportunity to find a way to be convivial happy and joyful well I stumbled upon a drink I drank it it made me feel warm it didn't make me feel sick apparently and it made me sleepy and that was a long long time ago and eventually I found that alcohol was a good way of suppressing my fear but I didn't know it was fear because we have to know what the emotions are in order to understand where we are so for many years I guess I lived with fear but didn't know I had it lived with a gap inside me and tried to fill it with all the things that uh, society suggests are good for me which is to accumulate material be a part of be included do the next right thing do everything to look right and there was always a saying of put on a stiff upper lip or put on a brave face and face the world and don't show your hurt even if you are because that's weak and if I'd known that there is a, a great strength in vulnerability that is to admit exactly where I am on any given day that something feels good or bad or loving or disturbing or just fearful better to admit fear and then find courage to change so 35 years of taking the edge off me suppressing my fear which also suppressed a lot of the other feelings unless I took another drink and another one and then I experienced some forms of emotion but they were probably at extremes of reaction and response rather than being somewhere in the middle where normal behavior is founded on feelings as they they can be for anybody who is classified as normal whatever normal might be so there we go uh, my drinking story as I say 35 years long and uh, how, did, how on earth did I get into a place of complete dependence and then addiction well I worked myself into the ground I had a lot of relationships over the years and I never really understood whether I was good enough or they were good enough or the situation was right and I used to say to myself right girl wrong time or wrong to wrong time right girl but behind it was fear and uh, an absolute desire to succeed at life and I thought the way we were measured was in material terms and the type of career, career we had so I was always striving for perfection and it did me no good it just wore me out so these days I prefer to be sober one day at a time make some progress understand my emotions understand how I am physically and get this spiritual connection to living and the only thing I've found is spiritual connection to living is living in the moment and seeing reality as it is and under understanding the truth of now it's all we've got and if there's more all well and good if it's just as it is and I understand it as best I can and make the best choices based on the right evidence the evidence of what is in front of me I'm more likely to check out what is going on around me be included include others and not take another drink and how have I managed to do this well I don't know how much it's down to me but my family community and professionals kept me alive long enough to get that moment of clarity and having got that moment of clarity I was introduced or somehow got into uh, the fellowship of AA Alcoholics Anonymous and AA helps me on a daily basis understand where I am what I may do how to be included, how to be loved, how to love other people and how to do something useful so that takes quite a long time to say 
but you know, uh, it's a daily basis. And the, the greatest gift of AA for me is it's full of unique, authentic people, not special and different, just unique and authentic on their own unique, authentic journey of life. And we have this common, common similarity, a desire to be sober one day at a time. So there are no chiefs, but a, a lot of Indians, if that's a, an okay thing to say. I think it is. We're all the same in the fellowship, same size, sober-sized, hopefully, just for, for one day. And there's the statement of intent that is shared at the beginning of every meeting, and it goes like this. The AA preamble. Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who share their experience, strength and hope with each other that they may solve their common problem and help others to recover from alcoholism. The only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking. There are no dues or fees for AA membership. We are self-supporting through our own contributions. AA is not allied with any sect, denomination, politics, organisation or institution. It does not wish to engage in any controversy neither endorses nor opposes any causes. Our primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety. And in there is a desire to stop drinking, primary reason for going to AA, and then to share experience, strength and hope that we may stay sober one day. And there's plenty of literature which uh, we can utilise any day to help us keep sober. And this particular book, Daily Reflections, gives us an opportunity to explore the 12 steps of the 12 step action program for individuals to change our attitude and behavior 12 months and 12 steps one a month so january has been all about step one powerless over alcohol and life is unmanageable if we drink so 31st of january this is what it says Our common welfare comes first, and this is all about unity, service and recovery in the fellowship. The unity of Alcoholics Anonymous is the most cherished quality that our society has. We stay whole or AA dies. In other words, we need each other. Our traditions are key elements in the ego, ego deflation process necessary to achieve and maintain sobriety in Alcoholics Anonymous. The first tradition reminds me not to take credit or authority for my recovery. In other words, it is down to leaning on fellowship and being a part of. The first tradition reminds me, yes, placing our common welfare first reminds me not to become a healer in this program. In other words, it's the whole fellowship, not me. I am still one of the patients, self and it goes on to say, self-effacing elders built the ward. Without it, I doubt I would be alive, and I can concur with that completely. Without the group, few alcoholics would recover. So key is fellowship, groups of alcoholics coming together. The active role in renewed surrender of will enables me to step aside from the need to dominate, the desire for recognition, both of which played so great a part in my active alcoholism. Deferring my personal desires for the greater good of the group, or greater good of group growth contributes towards AA unity that is central to all recovery. It helps me to remember that the whole is greater than the sum of its all, of, sum of all its parts. So, in other words, what it's saying is that uh, when we're part of a group of people, it's the group that counts and being included and a part of. It's not taking the lead or trying to change it particularly, but working together in a sort of anarchic democracy. Because nobody can tell anybody what to do in AA. But we end up agreeing around the principles of the program, unity, service, recovery, and the group comes first, always. So even though we might not always agree with what is going on, we do come to an understanding of what is best for everybody, rather than just us. And it's not about my point of view or opinion. Thank goodness for that. Anyway, the serenity prayer which I share at the end of these videos, to God or good conscience as you choose. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference is for me just for today.